I bought a well, it's a disposable pepper grinder. You know those kind. You can get the self-contained pepper grinder. Yes. You no, know, it's got the uh, what are they called in there? Pepper balls. I know that's not the answer. Peppercorns. Peppercorn. Mm-hmm. And you said it's disposable. It's a self-contained unit. I mean, you don't refill it. No, no. It's uh, it's all it's a self-contained deal. So instead of buying uh, just a you know, pre-ground pepper, you're buying a uh, smaller, just kind of it's one. It's just one ounce. It's basically getting it as a trial run to see do I actually am I actually going to care about the difference between you know fresh pepper and the not so fresh pepper, and then if I can, then maybe I'll invest in one of those ones that's the size of a bowling pen or something. So confused. What do you mean? Disposable pepper grinder? Uh, yes. Let me uh send it to you. All right. Yeah, I got it from Target. That's where I got it. Target.com. I was looking for, I discovered a book I wanted to get, and Target had it for a pre-order, but it was like 20 bucks, and I needed to get up to 35 Right. To get my to get my free shipping. Right. And uh, the, the disposable pepper grinder was one of the things that got me there. And I also got a uh, sea salt grinding kind of deal, similar deal. We have an all-in-one. It's salt on one side and pepper on the other side. And you can add salt and you can add pepper. But depending on which one you want, you flip it upside down and then you crunch it. And it grinds the salt or it grinds the pepper. Oh, it grinds on both ends. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'd seen the ones that are like a grinder on the bottom for the pepper, but the top was still just a salt shaker. Huh. That's good to know. Yeah. I've never seen a disposable. Logging into my Target account here, Kate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Such a thrill. Okay. Um, How'd you go da-da-da-da-da. from books to pepper? You're just like, oh. Because I knew I wanted to get a, a pepper grinder once. So it was just in my brain as something to get. As well. Okay. I also ordered popcorn because I kept forgetting to get popcorn at the grocery store. Because mm-hmm. I could just see, you know, when you put that book in your cart and it says other customers like or. <laughs> no. Um, may we suggest a pepper grinder? Well, Price Chopper doesn't have, they have some uh, like smaller servings with the steel cut oats. So I often find myself buying steel cut oats from either Target or Walmart, depending on what other, what other items I'm browsing, you know. Okay. So I just kind of have a backlog in my head of things that I should get when I need to get to $35 shipping. And so steel cut oats is always in the chamber as an option. And I just happen to remember, uh, there we go. I only found it. Black peppercorn grinder. And so you're just supposed to use that once. In fact, the reviews said, they're like, oh yeah, this works great, but I wish you could refill it. There we go. Boop, boop. So I got, the book is Ask Awada. He was the uh, CEO of Nintendo. He passed a, uh, Passed a while ago now, maybe five to ten years ago at this point. Um, really interesting guy. I got uh, two things of steel cut oats, McCormick black pepper corn grinder, McCormick sea salt grinder, and Pop Secret jumbo popping corn. That got me up to $35.89. Kate, nailed it. Stuck the landing. Way to go. Ish. Ish. So is the book a biography or an autobiography? Uh, neither. It's actually a collection of interviews that he did with uh, Nintendo developers over the course of years. Yeah. You know, how they came up with different concepts and overcame technological limitations, things like that. It's kind of dorky, kind of. Well, but it sounds interesting. Like when I want to play fantasy, I can, you know, write code and make video games. Mm-hmm. It's, fun. Mm-hmm. it's fun to have that kind of stuff in my brain. There you yeah. go. And, uh, yeah, it's just interesting, too, because, you know, they're all translated from Japanese and Japanese business culture is really interesting. It is. I agree with you there. So what do you think about that McCormick black peppercorn grinder, Kate? Now I understand it. I, when you were like, you don't refill it, I was thinking, how small is the sucker? But yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. It's a one ounce or it's glass. Yeah. Isn't that fancy? Fancy. McCormick doesn't mess around. They seem to have a, a monopoly on the market. Or not a monopoly. They seem to have a Decent hold on the market. It's like uh, either McCormick or, you know, knockoff brand, I feel like. Great value. Or go to a, you know, dedicated spice shop and get ready to make it rain. Oh, man. I don't know who those people are. 
I'd like to know those people, but I don't know those people. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe Chad and Anna, Gene and Kim, or Kevin and Valerie, your future neighbors, will be one of those people. Right? Like, you guys spend a lot of money on spices, so uh, <laughs> let's eat, because I want to see why they're so good. <laughs> Are you ever buying, like, basil leaves instead of... No. Are you ever buying raw spices? or Okay. No. Herbs and spices? Okay. No. Yeah, I think this black pepper... Thing might be as close as I get. We'll see. I sent you the picture of our spice cabinet exploded. Yes. Yeah. And uh, basically, I've kept uh, five spices out so that we could still use them before we move from the apartment. And I haven't looked back. I have a box full of spices, you know, I don't use. <laughs> Ever? Ever. Oh, what are you going to do? Uh, Monty uses them. Monty, I mean, they're still okay. going to go into the cupboard. They're still going to be there because you never know. I don't know. There's some things in there that I'm sure that I would use for random recipes. But, like, aside from basil, oregano, garlic, garlic salt, cayenne pepper. They just don't take up that much space. It's easy to hoard, don't you think? Spices? That's probably, yeah. That's probably. <laughs> Hoarding spices. I know. I know. Got to make some decisions here. House is filling up with spices. Well, and that's the thing. is like we've got a good cupboard for them. We've got the room. So that doesn't mean you need the spices. Just because you've got the room doesn't mean you need the things. That's the the line that I'm trying to walk right now. Now, when you say spice, I, I did see the various herbs and spices spread out across your kitchen counter. Do you actually have a spice rack? We have a spice cupboard. Oh, so a spice area, yeah, basically, where they all hang out. Right. Not a rack. Not a rack. I mean, we've got one of those things that go in your cupboard so that uh, you can put the smaller spices on top. Um, it's like a shelf oh. within your shelf. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It gives you, uh, yeah. But it goes around the outside of your cupboard, so you've got all the bottom space to to put your spices and then put your smaller spices on top and still see, but. Yeah, if you wanted to become a an artisanal herbs and spices person and start spending money on fancy spices, you would, they would all be in like uniform containers and they'll be in a fancy spice rack, right? You just put them on display. I don't know. I haven't seen many spice racks lately. I've seen a lot of spice drawers, Matt. Drawers? Yeah. What? Where their spices are organized in the drawers. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. When you say you see, is this, you're seeing this on like... All my organizing... Uh, sites that I've been watching lately. On your Pinterests and your YouTubes and such? Mm-hmm. Huh. Drawers. I couldn't imagine putting that. Drawers, yeah. And they're even, like, things that you can put in your drawers so that they stay put, so that they align up. And I'll just send that to you right now. Aren't some of these spices simply too tall? Or are they laying on their side and rolling around? Nope. Like you said, they're all uniform. So they're all the same. Okay. I've just received spice organization drawers is the search. Did you just search for spice organization drawers? Or is this a screenshot yeah, you took? Because okay. I just wanted to. Yeah. I just wanted to. Oh, this is clever. So they're actually kind of leaning back a little bit. Yeah. There's little um, things that you can put in your drawer. So they tip them up a little bit so you can see. Yeah. But like you said, they're all uniform. They're all the same. But it's like they decanted. Yeah, see, those are the fancy. Those are fancy spices. The one in the upper left there. Yeah, my cinnamon. The fancy cinnamon I bought is in one of those style Ooh. ones. That does look. That does look uh, handsome. See, <laughs> trying to think of right? what, what word I wanted to use there, and I think handsome is the word. I mean, it's kind of appealing. It's a lot of spices. We'll probably go up in the up in the cupboard. Yeah, I really couldn't imagine filling up a drawer with spices like this. Yeah, I mean, because we do have, like you said, like the bigger ones. I've got the basil and oregano and garlic and taco and uh, peppercorns. Those are all great big ones. Yeah. yeah. But they're going to have to go somewhere, and they should stay with their families. So let's go to a cupboard instead of a drawer. <laughs> yeah, they like hanging out. Yep. It's one of the nice things about being an herb and spice is that in these trying times, no social distancing required, Kate. They can just have their own little nightclub in there. <laughs> So stupid. It's spicy. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Yeah, have you thought about putting a little uh, disco ball and a little uh, maybe uh, also a, a miniature strobe light in there? No. It doesn't have to be on all the time, but just 
when you open the door, it comes on. That way you can at least imagine that there's this little nightclub in there and the spices are having a good time. And No, but our pantry light comes on when you come into the pantry. And I said, wouldn't it be fun if we got a nice, pretty light? Because right now it's just a can light. And Elliot was like, a disco ball. I'm like, okay, disco ball in the pantry. That sounds like hey, a good time. Look at that. This idea of a disco ball in the kitchen, more or less. Yeah. Uh, seems to be uh, gaining steam, Kate. I'd go for it. I mean, why not? Why not? So every time you go into the pantry, you're like, hey, it's a party. So I feel like you're not going to actually put a disco ball in there. I'm not anti. Okay. I'm not vetoing it. What other kind of light fixture would you put in there if not for a can light or a disco ball? Uh, maybe something pretty. Not like chandelier but maybe something <laughs> fun. Yeah, something that hangs down a little bit. Yeah. I'm not saying like mm. blinging it out, but that would be kind of fun. Yeah. I think I might save the bling for my closet, though. My closet has a, a can light, and I'm thinking, ooh, this needs something pretty in here. So maybe I save pretty for the closet and disco ball for the pantry. Interesting, because the closet, uh, I mean, so many of these things that we put in our homes are just to show off to like, you know. Not necessarily. Chad and Anna, Gene and Kim, or Kevin and Valerie when they come over to visit. Like, check out this sconce. <laughs> and I can't ever see myself saying, check out this sconce. <laughs> I will find out. But uh, I'm thinking like. <laughs> It's my closet. In your closet, though. Yeah, it's for me. It's pretty for me. Oh, I think that's great. And Monty, because he'll be there, too. Good self-care. <laughs> I'm sure he'll really love it. I bet you he'll uh, be disappointed that he wasn't in on the decision-making. That <laughs> How much did you spend on this closet light? He's, he's probably like, whoa, you did not spend as much as I thought you would spend. Let's go spend some more money. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what Monty would say. Now, it could make sense to invest a lot of money in a very color accurate light you know what i mean for no <laughs> so one that's not going to oh man i'm trying to think like something that gives you like perfect daylight so you'd get a real idea of what these clothes would look like together uh you know when you're trying to color coordinate like oh i didn't realize that that clashed a little bit thank god i paid for this really color you know color accurate light now see i was know. just thinking it should be a filter light like when I try on the clothes oh. with that light, I'm like, oh my gosh, that look good. So then when I walk out with that confidence, yeah. I'll be like, yeah, my light in my closet says I don't weigh as much as I do. Hmm. Look at these jeans. Whoop, whoop. Man, then you can't take that light with you. Maybe you'd be best served to put a like really unflattering fluorescent oh fixture in there. Like a dressing room light. Woof. That way, although... <laughs> I think a lot of people may overcompensate if they get really bad lighting. I was going to say, I will be in sweatpants if I have dressing room light. Forget it. I don't need jeans today. You just give up. Now, why would why does the dressing room have bad lighting? I don't, because they're cheap. That's all I can think of. But it's horrible lighting in every dressing room. I would think they'd make that money back quickly, though, because people are like, oh, man, this looks fantastic. You would think, but it's like Target. It's like... Walmart, it's... What about a fancier place? I'm not thinking of, like, boutique shopping. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking of where I buy clothes. All right. This is Target. You'll figure it out. This is Dick's Sporting Goods. We've got workout gear if it doesn't fit. <laughs> That's if the dressing rooms are open, because a lot of places, the dressing rooms aren't open still. Yeah. Uh, well, and a lot of places in the uh, before times, like, track down in the uh, an associate if you want to go into this dressing room, because right. we don't trust you. We don't. We need to count the number of things on you and the number of things that you're taking into there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I guess they're not really counting the number of things on you, just the number of items you're taking in there. But Well, I bet you they're still supposed to look at, like, does it look like they've got five items shoved in their shirts? And then the shoplifting is already complete at that point. Why would you need to go into the dressing room to do additional shoplifting? I think you'd just be showing off at that point and be asking for it. Well, maybe you actually want to purchase some items. Oh, you want to purchase... To make yourself feel a little bit better. Yeah. So you look more like a shopper instead of a shoplifter. You're leaving with bags instead of just, you know, clothes shoved into your clothes. Next, you don't want to drive them out of business. You just want to, you know, just bring the profit, right. profit margin down a little bit. Like, that just isn't worth that. You just don't want to pay $80 for that. So Right. I bet you this costs $20 to produce. Therefore, I will shoplift $60 of other stuff. And thus, it will be a... Fair transaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend shoplifting. Not one bit. Okay, just 
just to be clear. Not just one to be bit. clear. Nope. I know we kind of sound like we're rationalizing it, and it kind of sounds like we're giving you tips. We are not. Yeah, I keep on doing this thing. I call, I'm not going to be sarcastic anymore, Kate, and then I just dive right into the ocean of sarcasm. I don't even know how you even like think that that's a good idea. Right. I don't know how you haven't had the guts to think you could ever accomplish that, Matt. No, I would never say that. Keep dreaming. Good luck with that, is what I say, sarcastically. <laughs> not wholeheartedly at all. Oh, man. Some people need to reevaluate their diets. I just got back from the bathroom. Uh. So I don't want to go any further detail on that, but. Uh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were judging people while they eat. No. 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 I had to use the restroom. I hate it when that happens. And I was like, oh my God, this mask. Not doing it. No, the mask primarily keeps y- your spit and the whatever in your in your face. And yeah, it does help some prevent other people's spit and apparently other nah. matter. There you go. Thanks, Kate. You're welcome. From entering your <laughs> your nose. So, okay. Anyway, uh, I wear my mask to protect you, Kate. You know what I keep thinking I'm going to do with my mask, and I haven't done it yet. Um, let me guess. Yes. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, put some accessories on there. Put some flare on there. No. Put some pins or something on there. Flare would be good, though. Yeah. Flare would be good. You need know, like, little KJ, like ceramic KJ1055 pins. Oh, there we go. To decorate your mask, but that might be a. A little bit. I don't know. You want that pen that close to your mouth? Maybe I'll just get vinyl and have it printed on. There you go. Yeah. I don't know how we haven't been capitalizing on the merch opportunity here, giving out KJ1055 masks. What's wrong with us? Uh, Give me a reason to buy a cricket. I can just spin out some KJ masks. Oh, there's a, that's a device? Yes. Called a cricket that allows you to do your own screen printing? Like vinyl work. Yeah. Oh. All the labeling that you can handle. Is that right? This is meant for consumers or is it meant for people that want to start their own career as a... No, it's meant for uh, at-home use and some people turn it into, hmm. you know, side hustle. Yeah. Look it up. Cricket printing. Anytime you see like cute little labels on something, that's a cricket. Anytime you see like, you know, people have those tumblers with their names on it or something. Yeah. That's usually cricket. Oh, I figured there was something maybe they custom ordered online. It's very crafty from someone who has a cricket. <laughs> yeah, Cricket Joy Smart Machine. Yeah. S- smart. I don't have one. They kind of intimidate me. And I have friends with crickets that I'm like, hey, if I like slide some cash your way, can you make me things? So. 179 bucks from Michael's. Yeah. Okay. But people who have them love them. My sister loves hers. My friend Jen loves hers. Like, mm. I'm just like, hey, I've, I need some things labeled. Can I just pay for some of your vinyl and you can just like crank it out? Thanks. So it basically prints vinyl that then you use like a iron or something to a fix or what? No, like you, some... like a sticker almost. Like you put it on the item and then you smooth oh. it out with your hand so it's nice and firm on there. And then you peel the back off and there it is. On oh, your so you're item. not going to put it on an uh, article of clothing that would go through the wash, right? I think so. I don't know if you can with crickets. I know that there okay. are, I think you have to have like the certain vinyl. I, I don't know about fabric. It's interesting. I think you can on masks. Maybe just not shirts. We were just talking about spices and image number three on michaels.com for this product, the Cricket Joy Machine, mm-hmm. rosemary, thyme, and basil labels. Yeah. On this person's artisanally made uh, spice jars. Huh. Look at that. How timely. Looky there, Matt. Looky oh, there. one says marijuana on it. Well, that's weird. Well, that's weird. Yeah, okay. Because they've got glaucoma. <laughs> that must be it, yeah. It's for their eyeballs. Yeah, you know, the uh, medical marijuana thing is really taken off in Missouri. Yeah? Took them a bit to get it ramped up. Now, I'm seeing more and more friends like, oh, yeah, I got my card. And I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, if we did mar- medical marijuana 50 states wide and a majority of the proceeds went to the education of the state i got no problem or fixing the roads why do, although a lot of people are like well do we really need to be you know legalizing drugs to be able to fund education or should we just educate that appropriately you know you would think matt without needing to legalize new things but here we are where we've okay. drained the budgets for education hmm. come on now 
Mm -hmm. You got to snip up cereal boxes to get points to get cash from the it's ridiculous. Yeah. So, okay, looking at this cricket joy machine still. Yeah. And picture number four. So after you decorate your herbs and spice jars with labels. Yeah. Just spoiler alert. My pantry is going to have lots of fun, fancy cricket labels. Can't wait. Oh, you, you already have someone signed up to do that for you? She doesn't know it yet. Okay. She does now because she's listening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, good. Look at that. The magic of radio. Yay. So you had mentioned before about leaving notes in your kids' lunches. Mm-hmm. Each day you leave a personalized note in the kids' lunches, which I think is awesome. I think that's so cool. Post it on their lunchbox. Yep. So picture number four. So after the herbs and spices, they are labeling their Ziploc bags. Have a wonderful day. Heart mom. Whoa. And then it shows, uh, presumably, and this is the mother's hands, peeling off additional labels. One says, good luck on your test. And it's in a lightning bolt. One says, make a new friend. One says, you are amazing. And the other one says, your father and I are very disappointed in you. Oh, no, it says, <laughs> don't forget how much I love you. Sorry, I misread that. These are Ziploc bags or these are reusable bags? These are Ziploc bags that they are that this uh, person is putting uh, fixing these stickers onto. Oh, wow. Like, that's what a Sharpie's for, people. <laughs> yeah. That's my level of creativity right there. I doodle with Sharpie's. Well, okay, so it's interesting because she's peeling off these labels or pe peeling off these stickers, these mm -hmm. custom-made stickers. Uh, one, so she's peeling off the You Are Amazing one now. The Cricut printer, just a foot away, is printing off additional notes, and they say the same things. You're amazing. Love, Mom. Don't forget how much I love you. Love, Mom. So, Because hmm. yours, yours are original every day, right? Mine are Post-its. Original every day. Do you think you ever repeat? The only thing that gets repeated is XO heart mom or sometimes mama or when I'm feeling really old and I want them to stay little, I say mommy, even though I don't know if they call me mommy anymore. <laughs> Every now and then I get a mommy, but I'm always afraid like oh. they're kind of come out of the mommy stage like all together. Mommy. And I don't remember when I came out of the mommy stage, but mommy, I would still call my dad daddy every now and then like daddy, come on. But I didn't say mommy. That is great. Yeah. So wholesome. So I'm trying to keep them small and call me mommy. Call me mommy. <laughs> mommy. Mommy. They're like mom, <laughs> mom, mama, mom. mom. I'm like not till you say mommy. Yeah, and mom is spelled M A H M in that case, right? Mom. Mom. Okay. So back to what I'm going to do with my mask. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're, so your mask, you think you're going to take one of these labels and put it on? This isn't going to survive the wash, I don't think. No, I'm not going to do that. I was joking about doing that. You remember oh, okay. you said you wanted to guess and you were talking about merch and I said, or oh, I could slap some labels on them, get a cricket. But I, <laughs> when I need to stay awake, I put peppermint in my nose. <laughs> like I take a little bit of peppermint oil and I put a little drop on my finger and put it in my nose. So I smell peppermint. Oh, yeah. Correct. Because I accused you of having a Coke nail that one day. Yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. it's my it's my peppermint in my nostril. It's my There's, peppermint. Basically, your your smelling salt is a little bit less harsh. Exactly. And you put pepper, which is, just blows my mind. <laughs> it shouldn't be that crazy, right? It well, but clearly it is. Okay. I mean, for for me, not not for. I'm sure plenty of people do that. What if you put like lemon or a smell that you like in your mask so that you're Breathing in lemon oh, in your mask or peppermint or whatever, yeah. you know. Put some essential oils, dab some yeah. essential oils on your mask. Sure. Yeah. I just, I've been talking about doing that, like, because I love the smell of, you know, lemon. And that's better than smelling other things when you have to go places. <laughs> so. Okay. Maybe I just, this is how we safeguard our noses before we go into the station bathroom. Hmm. Oh, better gear my nose up for the station bathroom. Drop a little lemon in there. So, yeah, that's more achievable than getting people to adjust their diets. Yeah, you know, to either become more regular or to become less foul. Yeah, whatever. My friend Jen, she does Scentsy, and her bathroom smells like a vacation. Is that something that has a time release kind of? No, it's like a uh, sounds familiar. The wax melts. 
Oh, yeah. Where you plug it into the outlet and you've got the little wax melt. Yeah, yeah. instead of using a flame uh, in a candle, you're using the heat off of a light bulb to melt wax, right? Off the outlet. Yeah, off the outlet, yeah. Not the bulb. Yeah. Oh, I thought there was like a light bulb in there or something. No. It's a, yeah, it's a heating element inside yeah, there. Yeah, okay. heating element, yeah. Gotcha. Sorry, I was picturing like the vanity light melting the wax. I'm like, no, that's not where it goes. But I came out of her bathroom the other day. I'm like, it smells like vacation in here. You don't usually say that in a bathroom. <laughs> I feel like there are ones that do use just like an incandescent light bulb. Am I, I think you're right. Totally, I think okay. you're right. But the Scentsy is something different. I think so. I don't think it has a bulb. Gotcha. It's not like a two-in-one night light kind of deal or whatever. Right. Okay. I may be talking way out of term, but I don't think it has a light. I never talk out of term, Matt. Turn? Term. Uh, turn. And it is your turn, or it was your turn, so no, you no. weren't. Uh, it's always your turn, Kate. Come on. <laughs>